How's it going everyone? Landon with LMR.com. In this video, I'm gonna be checking out and installing this driver and passenger side front lower control arm kit designed for the 1994 to 2004 Mustangs. These front lower control arms are going to appeal to the SN95 and new edge enthusiasts out there wanting to restore a vital front end component. Each control arm is stamped from high quality steel and then finished in a protective coating to withstand the elements. New rubber bushings and ball joints are pre-installed so you don't have to hassle with replacing them individually. Of course, you'll find that each front lower control arm has the correct provision for the sway bar end link, the spring, and it even includes a new ball joint retaining nut. Now speaking of ball joint retaining nut, it is extremely important that this nut be torqued to the correct torque spec of 129 pound-feet. Now this particular kit will include the driver side front lower control arm and the passenger side front lower control arm. This means you can go ahead and service both sides of the vehicle. It is going to be a direct standard issue replacement for all 1994 to 2004 Mustangs. Now for those of you wondering whether or not that these will replace 0304 Cobra control arms, they will. You just won't get the nylon bushings and the low friction ball joints that came factory in the 0304 Cobra control arms. To begin the install, support the front of the car with jack stands or the entire vehicle with a lift. Remove the front wheels. Turn the wheel to allow easier access of the castle nut on the ball joint. Remove the cotter pin with a pair of needle nose pliers. Loosen, but do not fully remove the castle nut with a 24 millimeter box end wrench. Back the castle nut off until the top of the nut is even with the top of the ball joint. Strike the back of the control arm with a large hammer to separate the ball joint from the spindle. Spray penetrating oil on the control arm nuts. Loosen each control arm nut with a 24 millimeter socket and breakover bar. Use a 21 millimeter box end wrench on the bolt head and the 24 millimeter socket with a socket wrench to completely remove the nut. Do the same for the rearward hardware, except you'll want to use another socket and the breakover bar to hold the bolt. This is because of the K-member design. If you own a 96204 mod motor car, you will need to bring the steering rack forward to remove the frontward lower control arm bolts. Locate the rearward 15 millimeter bolt head and the frontward 18 millimeter nut, retaining the steering rack to the K-member. Remove both nuts and washers. Use a pry bar on the passenger side of the steering rack. If needed, you may have to remove the bolt on the steering shaft to steering rack to allow for proper clearance of the driver's side. Place a pair of vice grips on the sway bar end link flat. Loosen and remove the lower retaining nut with the 15 millimeter deep socket. Go ahead and remove the bushing. Remove the vice grips. Support the inward part of the control arm with a jack. Jack up on the control arm until pressure is relieved and each bolt easily slides out. Carefully lower the jack until the spring tension is relieved. Remove the spring from the car. Now you can fully remove the castle nut from the ball joint. Then the old control arm is free to come out. If you would like, go ahead and take this time to wipe down the area before you install the new control arm. Ensure that the protective cap is removed from the ball joint. Position the new ball joint into the spindle and tighten the 24 millimeter nut until you close the gap between the boot and spindle. If you have trouble positioning the control arm into the K member, utilize a hammer to slightly widen the openings. Ensure that the lower isolator is overhanging on the end of the pigtail. Also, make sure you orientate the end of the pigtail on the spring correctly in the spring cup. Install the spring into place. Use the vice grips on the other end link. Loosen and remove the lower 15 millimeter nut and bushing. This will allow the sway bar to fully pivot. We'll retighten these at the very end. Carefully jack up on the inward portion of the control arm. Align the bolt holes in the K member with the bushings. This is done with a large screwdriver. Reinstall the bolts in the same orientation as the factory. Remove the jack from underneath the control arm. Reinstall the nuts. Utilize the same combination of tools that you use to loosen the hardware to tighten it. You want to torque these lower control arm nuts to 148 pound feet. At this time, you can go ahead and repeat these steps for the other side. With the sway bar at full pivot, reinstall them into each hole on both control arms. Reinstall the lower bushing and 15 millimeter nut. 
hold the flat with the vice grips, and then fully tighten the nut. Do the same for the other in-link hardware. Fully tighten the supplied nylock ball joint nut with a 24 millimeter box end wrench. Now because of the tight area, do your best to torque this retaining nut to 129 pound feet. Reinstall the wheels and then get the car on the ground. After that, you're all finished. All right guys, wrapping everything up here. These control arms installed with relative ease. That is of course, if you've dealt with suspension related components before. Of course, if you aren't comfortable with installing these yourself, be sure and find a trustworthy local shop so that they can install these for you. Again, it's very important to note that this ball joint nut be torqued to 129 pound feet. Failure to torque it to that specific torque spec will cause the ball joint nut to back off from the ball joint. To see more how-to and review videos covering industry leading products, be sure and subscribe to our YouTube channel, like this video, and don't forget to turn on notifications. While you're at it, check out our other videos and don't forget to shop LMR.com for all things 1979 to present Mustang and SVT Lite.